Well, thank you very much. Uh, first, I'll apologize for being late. Uh, one of the uh, upsides, downsides of living in a northern clime is they have to blow and melt the snow off the wings of the airplane. And today, I, today in Montreal, where I was coming from, it decided to have a snowstorm just as we were about to leave. <laughs> I, uh, I had a very well-written speech prepared for me by my staff and so I'll apologize to them as well because I'm not very good at giving well-written prepared speeches um, but I do have uh, opinions on the subject at hand and I must tell you I'm humbled by uh, your presence uh, in this room uh, it is really gratifying to see this many uh, people uh, concerned about an issue uh, that uh, for many, many years uh, our union stood uh, almost by itself in opposition uh, to the building uh, of the uh, pipelines from Canada uh, to the U.S. and now uh, proposed uh, elsewhere. Our union did uh, by a convention mandate of all of its delegates unanimously endorse and support the Kyoto Accord and as uh, was said our members are the workers who work uh, in the tar sands in refineries on pipelines uh, and any uh, facet of the oil and gas industry but our members in that sector said there's something wrong with this model and we need to address it. The issue of the pipelines from Canada, primarily from the tar sands, and I, we'll, I'll stop you there for a minute. Um, I've been there many times and most likely not many of you have had. Uh, there is no tar in the tar sands. There is also no oil in the tar sands. It has to be cracked. It has to be processed to convert it to synthetic oil that then gets refined. So uh, we've been using the term the bitumen sands and that's what it is and that's um, you know politically correct nice word. I recommend you use the what it looks like it is gooey mucky tar. <laughs> so tar sands are fine for us. We have opposed the export of unprocessed bitumen tar sands to the United States for about eight or nine years now. Um, we uh, got our butt kicked at every judicial turn of the way opposing the building of the XL pipeline and its earlier uh, cousin. We had very little support, believe it or not, and I think it's a fair criticism from the environmental movement either. It just wasn't on anybody's radar. <laughs> and our members uh, consistently, our members not just in the union at large, because remember 120,000 members of which 35, 40,000 work in the industry, just consistently said, just keep going. So one convention, one conference after another, you got to oppose the export of raw bitumen. And we lost. We lost all the way down until, thanks to our uh, sisters and brothers and comrades in the United States, somebody got to the president and he shook his head and said no. And that actually inspired uh, the environmental movement probably around the world, but particularly in Canada, to continue the battle, not just on uh, the XL pipeline, but on a number of other uh, export pipelines that were uh, being proposed to export raw bitumen. So what is our position on the tar sands? It's a four-legged stool by our point of view and if one of the legs is missing then it should stop and not be expanded or or enlarged and those four 
legs of that stool from our point of view, and I think we can make good arguments on all of them, are first, the export of raw bitumen is a job killer in Canada. Not much of importance to many uh, Americans, but it's a job killer in Canada, really important to us. It is bad for the Canadian economy. It's the Dutch disease. The Canadian dollar uh, is out of whack by 20%, 15%. I'm not an economist. I'm only reading their reports that the oil side of the economy in Canada has skewed the value of the Canadian dollar and subsequently killed hundreds of thousands of manufacturing jobs in Canada. So another big Canadian issue. One issue seldom talked about in the United States, and I, I would urge you to follow now on the web and Twitter, our, and the, our point of view is that the oil companies and the Crown, the country of Canada, has to come to terms with First Nations rights. We have a treaty system in Canada and some, thank you. It, it is a big deal. Watch now uh, for a group called Idle No More. And we have had uh, protests and arrests escalating over the last three months. Um, now because of a hunger strike by a Northern Canadian uh, First Nations chief around the abuse and the violation of First Nations rights. And much of that has to do with the building of pipelines through their uh, traditional uh, lands uh, and extraction on, uh, in their territories. The Canadian government, in our view, has violated the Canadian Constitution by making changes uh, to uh, acts that govern water and uh, the environment that infringe upon First Nations. And uh, they're pissed off and are, uh, quite frankly, uh, telling uh, the Canadian people and the Canadian government enough's enough. And finally, the last stool of the leg is the environment. We cannot sustain the expansion of a carbon economy. I mean, my 10 and 11 and 12-year-old grandchildren know that. I mean, they don't, they don't buy any of uh, the nonsense around carbon. They know we have to. We must uh, transition out of a carbon-based economy to a sustainable, renewable, whatever the word green means. Um, we also represent a whole pile of forestry workers and we have uh, some views on sustainable economy and the use of the forest as well, but I shall stick to the point. The environment is fundamental for those who work in the industry. And then the question is always, and I, I got to tell you that unlike the US, because the last time I was supposed to come and speak to this group, uh, a number of trade unions in the United States threatened to boycott the, uh, the not boycott, picket if I showed up. Uh, and so, you know, valor being usually not one of my best traits, but uh, I decided not to infringe upon the university's program and I didn't come. But in Canada, other than the, U the US based construction unions, the labor movement supports our position. The labor movement supports the position we're taking on the export of, of raw bitumen and, and transitioning to a green economy. We belong to an organization with the steelworkers, steelworkers of America, a blue-green coalition that is doing tremendous work trying to convince and pressure the government and em employers that we have to transition to a green economy. So we have good support within the political realm of the opposition in Canada. The opposition, the leader of the opposition party has taken some very courageous positions on, on the uh, oil sands and on uh, a carbon-based economy. So what do you do with my dues-paying members who by 
a action of society, you, me, others, say we can't have a carbon society. We have to then look very seriously and realistically as how do you transition not just the workers, but the communities that were based on those industries into good paying, good paying, sustainable jobs. So you need to continually think, you can't just turn the key on carbon. First, there's a number of us in Northern Canada would probably freeze to death. Um, you know, the, when you talk about transition away from carbon, there is some practical issues about how our nation was built. Uh, doesn't mean it can't be done at all, but you've got to think about the transition and a just transition for workers and their communities uh, when society makes the determination that it is about to make, I believe, that we have to uh, move away uh, from a carbon-based economy. Um, I, I'm, I don't support capitalism. I think it's a screwed up system. Some... <laughs> I got to tell you, uh, we really got hammered in Canada during the Great Recession, the Depression, whatever you want to call 207, 208, 209. And a, a number on the left, including myself, at the beginning thought, ah, this, this will maybe be the remaking of a kinder, gentler capitalism. Well, it's, it's nonsense. Some would say it's bullshit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, just think about that we have to repair capitalism. Well, first off, repair it from what? It was designed to do what it's doing. It is not broken. Capitalism is not broken. It's doing exactly what it was intended to do. Make a few people rich and the rest of us not so rich and in many cases poor starving and dying. So I, for quite frankly, have no patience for anyone that says, well, we just need to tweak it because uh, no, then it'll get better. It'll get better for a very few. But the system is not built for you and I, never was. And we need to think about that when we talk about transitioning to a sustainable economy, a green sustainable economy. In my union, we lost in the forest sector, well, it's between us and a couple of other unions, 100,000 forestry jobs in about three or four years uh, through that period of time. Uh, and when you lose your job in a one horse town, you don't just use, lose your job. You lose your house because it was worth a couple hundred thousand, it's now worth some people were buying them on credit cards, $5,000. But you lose your community. Community can't function. So the whole issue of uh, the economy in a carbon-based society uh, has all kinds of implications. So what do we do? I don't like to just be a naysayer. I don't, I don't think that you, you've got to have a takeaway um, what to do. So for, I hope, our allies south of the 49th, you've got to turn the heat up on President Obama. All you need him to do is shake his head. Doesn't have to say very much. All he has to do is shake his head and say, no, they're not going to allow the building of the XL pipeline on the Continental 49, right, right below the 49. Just do whatever you have to do. And how do you do that? Well, quite frankly, um, I've been arrested already uh, once uh, in Canada for resisting the XL pipeline. Myself and uh, a number of others uh, got arrested for disobeying uh, the gendarmes. Um, civil society in Canada, organized civil society was there with us along with First Nations and uh, it once again retaught us that we must resist, we must, we must, we must, and including civil disobedience, don't let them build the pipeline.
So what else can you do? Well, the regular stuff. Follow what's going on. Be informed. Be informed of what the real issues are. Don't get, I mean, you get bombed by it far more than we do, but the Fox Network crap, right? It, I mean, it's not anywhere near, I mean, it's not even fantasy, it's just straight lies. But don't get washed in with it. Be informed, understand, and talk about it. Talk about it in the church, wherever you are, that what is happening to North America around those pipelines and the use of carbon is detrimental to society as a whole, regardless of where you're from. And so you need to be able to speak out and speak out loudly. And a labor movement in the United States is in fact, uh, other than, like I said before, other than those that are in the American-based construction building unions, um, are in fact very seriously engaging in that debate in the United States and around the world. So do whatever you can to argue for a just and reasonable, renewable, green economy. Thank you.